The Song of Hiawatha by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Section 9. Hiawatha and the Pearl Feather. On the shores of Gitchigumi, of the shining big sea water, stood Nokomis the old woman, pointing with her finger westward, o'er the water, pointing westward to the purple clouds of sunset. Fiercely the red sun descending burned his way along the heavens, set the sky on fire behind him, as war parties when retreating burn the prairies on their war trail. And the moon, the night sun, eastward, suddenly starting from his ambush, followed fast those bloody footprints, followed in that fiery war trail, with its glare upon his features. And Nokomis, the old woman, pointing with her finger westward, spake these words to Hiawatha. Yonder dwells the great pearl feather, Megisogwan the magician, Manito of wealth and wampum, guarded by his fiery serpents, guarded by the black pitch water. You can see his fiery serpents, the Kenabik, the great serpents, coiling, playing in the water. You can see the black pitch water stretching far away beyond them to the purple clouds of sunset. He it was who slew my father by his wicked wiles and cunning when he from the moon descended, when he came on earth to seek me. He, the mightiest of magicians, sends the fever from the marshes, sends the pestilential vapours, sends the poisonous exhalations, sends the white fog from the fenlands sends disease and death among us take your bow o hiawatha take your arrows jasper headed take your war club puga war gun and your mittens minjikawan and your birch canoe for sailing and the oil of mishinama so to smear its sides that swiftly you may pass the black pitch water slay this merciless magician save the people from the fever that he breathes across the fenlands and avenge my father's murder straightway then my hiawatha armed himself with all his war gear launched his birch canoe for sailing with his palm its sides he patted said with glee chimorn my darling oh my birch canoe leap forward where you see the fiery serpents where you see the black pitch water forward leaped chimorn exulting and the noble hiawatha sang his war song wild and woeful and above him the war eagle the canoe the great war eagle master of all fowls with feathers screamed and hurtled through the heavens soon he reached the fiery serpents the kenabik the great serpents lying huge upon the water sparkling rippling in the water lying coiled across the passage with their blazing crests uplifted breathing fiery fogs and vapours, so that none could pass beyond them. But the fearless Hiawatha cried aloud, and spake in this wise, Let me pass my way, Kenabik, let me go upon my journey. And they answered, hissing fiercely, with their fiery breath made answer, Back, go back, O Shorgadaya, back to old Nokomis, faint heart. Then the angry Hiawatha raised his mighty bow of ash-tree, seized his arrows, jasper-headed, shot them fast among the serpents. Every twanging of the bowstring was a war-cry and a death-cry. Every whizzing of an arrow was a death-song of Kenabik. Weltering in the bloody water, dead lay all the fiery serpents, and among them Hiawatha, harmless, sailed, and cried exulting, Onward, O Chimorn, my darling! onward to the black pitch-water. Then he took the oil of Nama, and the bows and sides anointed, smeared them well with oil, that swiftly he might pass the black pitch-water. All night long he sailed upon it, sailed upon that sluggish water, covered with its mould of ages, black with rotting water-rushes, rank with flags and leaves of lilies, stagnant, lifeless, dreary, dismal, lighted by the shimmering moonlight, and by will-o'-the-wisps illumined, fires, by ghosts of dead men kindled in their weary night encampments. All the air was white with moonlight, all the water black with shadow, and around him the sugema, the mosquito, sang his war-song, 
and the fireflies wawatesi waved their torches to mislead him and the bullfrog the dahinda thrust his head into the moonlight fixed his yellow eyes upon him sobbed and sank beneath the surface and anon a thousand whistles answered over all the fenlands and the heron the shushuga far off on the reedy margin heralded the hero's coming westward thus fared hiawatha toward the realm of megisogwon toward the land of the pearl feather till the level moon stared at him in his face stared pale and haggard till the sun was hot behind him till it burned upon his shoulders and before him on the upland he could see the shining wigwam of the manito of wampum of the mightiest of magicians then once more chimorn he patted to his birch canoe said onward and it stirred in all its fibres and with one great bound of triumph leaped across the water lilies leaped through tangled flags and rushes and upon the beach beyond them dry shod landed hiawatha straight he took his bow of ash tree on the sand one end he rested with his knee he pressed the middle stretched the faithful bowstring tighter took an arrow jasper headed shot it at the shining wigwam sent it singing as a herald as a bearer of his message of his challenge loud and lofty come forth from your lodge pearl feather hiawatha waits your coming straightway from the shining wigwam came the mighty megisogwon tall of stature broad of shoulder dark and terrible in aspect clad from head to foot in wampum armed with all his warlike weapons painted like the sky of morning streaked with crimson blue and yellow crested with great eagle feathers streaming upward streaming outward well i know you hiawatha cried he in a voice of thunder in a tone of loud derision hasten back o shogodaya hasten back among the women back to old nokomis faint heart i will slay you as you stand there as of old i slew her father but my hiawatha answered nothing daunted fearing nothing big words do not smite like war-clubs boastful breath is not a bowstring taunts are not so sharp as arrows deeds are better things than words are actions mightier than boastings then began the greatest battle that the sun had ever looked on that the war-birds ever witnessed all a summer's day it lasted from the sunrise to the sunset for the shafts of hiawatha harmless hit the shirt of wampum harmless fell the blows he dealt it with his mittens minjikawan harmless fell the heavy war-club it could dash the rocks asunder but it could not break the meshes of that magic shirt of wampum till at sunset hiawatha leaning on his bow of ash tree wounded weary and desponding with his mighty war-club broken with his mittens torn and tattered and three useless arrows only paused to rest beneath a pine tree from whose branches trailed the mosses and whose trunk was coated over with the dead man's moccasin leather with the fungus white and yellow suddenly from the boughs above him sang the mama the woodpecker aim your arrows hiawatha at the head of megisogwon strike the tuft of hair upon it at their roots the long black tresses there alone can he be wounded winged with feathers tipped with jasper swift flew hiawatha's arrow just as megisogwon stooping raised a heavy stone to throw it full upon the crown it struck him at the roots of his long tresses and he reeled and staggered forward plunging like a wounded bison yes like pejaki the bison when the snow is on the prairie swifter flew the second arrow in the pathway of the other piercing deeper than the other wounded sorer than the other and the knees of megisogwon shook like windy reeds beneath him bent and trembled like the rushes but the third and latest arrow swiftest flew and wounded sorest and the mighty megisogwon saw the fiery eyes of pauguk saw the eyes of death glare at him heard his voice call in the darkness 
at the feet of hiawatha lifeless lay the great pearl feather lay the mightiest of magicians then the grateful hiawatha called the mama the woodpecker from his perch among the branches of the melancholy pine tree and in honour of his service stained with blood the tuft of feathers on the little head of mama even to this day he wears it wears the tuft of crimson feathers as a symbol of his service then he stripped the shirt of wampum from the back of megisogwan as a trophy of the battle as a signal of his conquest on the shore he left the body half on land and half in water in the sand his feet were buried and his face was in the water and above him wheeled and clamoured the canoe the great war eagle sailing round in narrower circles hovering nearer 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 from the wigwam hiawatha bore the wealth of megisogwan all his wealth of skins and wampum furs of bison and of beaver furs of sable and of ermine wampum belts and strings and pouches quivers wrought with beads of wampum filled with arrows silver-headed homeward then he sailed exulting homeward through the black pitch water homeward through the weltering serpents with the trophies of the battle with a shout and song of triumph on the shore stood old nokomis on the shore stood chibiabos and the very strong man kwasind waiting for the hero's coming listening to his songs of triumph and the people of the village welcomed him with songs and dances made a joyous feast and shouted honour be to hiawatha he has slain the great pearl feather slain the mightiest of magicians him who sent the fiery fever sent the white fog from the fenlands sent disease and death among us ever dear to hiawatha was the memory of mama and in token of his friendship as a mark of his remembrance he adorned and decked his pipe-stem with the crimson tuft of feathers with the blood-red crest of mama but the wealth of megisogwan all the trophies of the battle he divided with his people shared it equally among them End of section nine